A fisherman is preparing to go fishing. He's waiting on his crew. The crew are late. He realizes they're not coming, which is a shame, for it's a fine night for fishing. He thinks he could take his sons instead, but he would need all three sons to work the nets, and it's never wise for so many from one family to sail in the same boat. But it's a fine night, so he decides to take the risk. And he gathers his sons. And as they're preparing the boat to go fishing, a stranger arrives on a white horse, and he asks, are you going fishing? We don't know you. Yes, we are, said the father. Then take with you an axe, a hook, and a knife, said the stranger, and he rode away. Well, it would do no harm to take his advice, said the father, so he sent his youngest son back to the house to get an axe, a hook, and a knife. They stowed the nets, they shoved the boat off, and they set out to fish. Many other boats were fishing that night. It was a fine night, and the fishing was good. But after a while, the father said, Pull in the nets. The sky is hardening. We must row for shore. It was a wise decision, but perhaps a little late, for no sooner had they started to row when the sea rose and a storm arose, and then suddenly they saw behind them a mighty wave coming towards them, and the oldest son shouted, That will surely send us to the bottom. Then throw into it the axe, said the father. And that's what the son did. He waited, he took the axe, and he threw it into the middle of this mighty wave, and the wave immediately split and passed safely either side of the boat. Relieved, they pulled faster for sure. But then they saw behind them another wave, and this wave was as high as a house. Throw in the hook, said the father, and the middle son took the hook. Again, he waited till the wave was almost upon them. He threw out the hook into the wave, and immediately, as before, the wave split and passed safely either side of the boat. By now, the night was dirty. The rain was coming down hard. They could not even see the shore, but they could see behind them another wave. And this wave was as high as a hill. No one in the boat thought that they would survive this one. Throw out the knife, said the father. And it was the turn now of the youngest son. And he stood up and he took the knife. And he waited until this grey cold slab of water, this hillside of water was almost upon them. And he threw out the knife as far as he could. And it went into the wave and again the wave split. But the wave was so large it still swept the boat forwards and onto the shore where they were safe and they went home for supper and they were eating their supper when they heard through the sound of the storm that was still raging a knocking at the door and there at the door they found the stranger with the white horse and he said your sons must come with me now well the father could not refuse he had saved their lives. So the three sons went out, and all three of them sat upon the horse, and the stranger walked beside them, and he led them away. And they hadn't gone far when they got to a town which strangely was unknown to any of the three young men. And the town was full of crowds of strangers, couples, men and women together, come from a dance, holding each other, having fun. They rode further. They came to a large house. And the stranger said, you are needed in there. You must go in, he said this to the three sons. And he said, but whatever is said to you, whatever you see, do not speak a word. They went in. A doorman was waiting for them. He took the oldest son and he told him, go to the top of the house and there you will find a room. 
Go in. He went to the top of the house. He opened the door. And inside he found a parlor. Perhaps the finest parlor he'd ever seen. And in it was a bed. And on the bed was a woman. Perhaps the most beautiful woman he'd ever seen. And stuck in the middle of her forehead was the axe. And she said, this is your handiwork. Remove it. And he did so. And he did not say a word. And he came back downstairs. And the middle son went to another room where he found another parlor, another bed, another woman. And she had the hook stuck into her shoulder. This is your handiwork, she said. Remove it. And he did. But he didn't say a word. And then it was the turn of the youngest son. And he went to another room where again there was a, a bed and a woman. And she had a knife, the knife, stuck in her skull behind her ear. And as commanded, he removed it. But then she spoke to him some more. She says, my blessings on you and my curses on the man who instructed you. Every woman in this town got a husband tonight. Except the three of us. We are three sisters. We should be married to you three brothers. My curses on the man who instructed you. He went downstairs. He left with his two brothers. They got onto the horse again. The stranger looked up at them. He said, You will never speak of what you saw tonight. Those three women would have had you as husbands, but for me. And they rode home. Yet the journey back, curiously, took seven times longer than the journey there. And when they got back to the home, the cottage, the stranger stopped and he said some last words to the three sons. He said, 31 men were drowned tonight. Those are the men that you saw with their wives in the town. But for me, you would be married to the three sisters. And then he left them. And the door opened and the father was waiting there. And the father looked at his sons. And the sons said nothing. And that is where the story ends. Now, we've had a lot of cautionary tales tonight. As I said at the start, we are walking puddles, cased in firmer tissue. Food we can defer, but hydration we cannot. The problem comes when we hydrate with the wrong fluid. <laughs> Here is a cautionary tale about the perils that come when you enter a strange port and drink too much of the wrong fluid. 